Barry McLean Jr., thanks again for coming in, man. I really, really appreciate you. I've been such a fan of your work for so long, and we were just talking backstage about how we wanted to do this for so long, but we finally got to connect, dude. How you been, man? Oh, I've been great, Nick. Um, again, we're comic book buddies, first and foremost. Yeah. You know? Yep, yep. And um, you, you, you know how I am. You know how corny I am, man. And like when you guys, <laughs> you sent me as a gift that that Polito. Yeah. Oh my God, that, that, it was it's yeah, a yeah, dream. Yeah. It's like I, I wanted that book for a long time. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, I remember when Polito had that book um, before. It was an all white cover. Right. Evil right. Ernie holding that body up with the blood yep. coming down. Oh. Uh -huh. Yeah. yeah. It was a piece of history you gave me. So for for those who don't who don't know exactly what we're talking about, man, we uh, so so first off, we're, real quick, how I how I got on your radar, which leads into that story. We'll do a, we'll do a real quick recap, real quick. Yeah, it was like the summer of um, summer of like twenty twenty one, something like that. I go it into my that, yeah. I go into my comic book shop, and my comic book shop looks after me, and they they know I'm like in the indie stuff, and I always like to give stuff a chance. And they uh, Diamond had a preview book out, and it was for this little book right here. Diamond had a preview book out and they were like, Hey, this looks like it's right up your alley. Why don't you go ahead and check it out? And I flipped <laughs> through it and I was like, what the hell am I looking at, man? This is like insane. There's like, <laughs> Thank you. I think I turned it in. I opened it up and I'm like, there's tornadoes and there's rabbits and there's people oh. getting cut in half and there's monsters. I'm like what the hell is going on? And then I think I read it and I was like, this is, this is great. And I went ahead and pre-ordered it. It comes great. in, I review it and I'm pretty sure I tagged you is how we like initially connected or something like that. Yeah. Um, probably was at the New York Comic Con. Uh, yeah. Uh, around the time we had rolled it out and Blue Juice treats me good all the time. I mean, like yep. I can't. Yep. Publisher for Billy. Complain. Yep. I love mm -hmm. that publisher. It's my favorite publisher. And around that time, Nick, when it came out, um, man, you got connected. Mm -hmm. I was just happy that uh, it, the book connected with people um i'm yeah. sure justin felt the same my, my, my co-creator yeah uh, yep, writer. it's a yep, new yep. ip and every mm -hmm. time you're doing a new ip especially anamorphic characters i yeah. see so many of them um the genius thing that justin did with that i i feel this is my opinion that that got people attention and brought people together under the the, the banner ability kit yeah. is because how he played it when he wrote it he played it so straight yeah, like yeah, a, yeah, a yeah. movie and I, I was, it's like tarantino yo i was just like yeah 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 and i meet uh, a little bit of uh, a shop talking when we were forming it i wanted billy to be little with a magical slingshot eating little carrot chips and stuff like okay. that yeah and that would have been fun but sure. what justin genius butt did he said you know what we gonna play it straight so um when we do get to the time for nickelodeon and stuff we can yeah. dumb it down and it won't be perverted yeah, you'll do the turtle route, right? Mm -hmm. it'll, it'll be hardcore as hell, and then you'll then you'll it'll be. Yeah, I know he, be. man, but he's a master. I mean, yeah, he, yeah, yeah, yeah. He wrote for um, Jonah Hex, Hellboy, all this other stuff. Yeah, he's yeah, yeah. not, and uh, he he just knows what he's doing when it comes to horror, man, and yeah, uh, action adventure. And I I, I got good um, action beats and stuff because I'm high energy and high energy yeah. on the page. Yeah, and uh, we just. I stalked him for about five years before he even did the book, man. He was giving me advice on a low and yeah. it could be better as a penciler. So that's cool. Well, yeah, I mean, we, we, you know, you first got my radar from that book and man, I, I, uh, I, I really appreciate the AOKs and stuff like that, that you've given me over the years and things. And, uh, yeah, I'm just glad that, uh, we've been able to connect and, uh, yeah, dude, comics, got, man. What crazy! I like thing. you, Nick, because uh, the way you talk about comics is like how I feel about comics. It's like nice and plain and simple. Yeah. Um, yeah. The industry was built on sticky hands and dimes. Sure. Um, I feel that it should stay that way. You know. Yeah. I mean? <laughs> yeah. For sure. For sure. Yeah. So, um, I know I, I got to meet uh, Brian uh, Plato over in Memphis uh, this, this past a... year, and so I was like, oh man. I think mm -hmm. I, I think I, I think just, I know something I can grab. He was a cool dude. Have you, have you met him before? He's a, yeah, he's awesome. I, I met him. I, my funny thing about me and Polito history is that when I was six, my mom got me in a horror. She was reading Fangoria magazine yeah, in yeah. 1986. This is around, uh, uh, believe it or not. Um, I want to say, yeah, well, it had to be 86 because in, mm -hmm. in Fangoria magazine, you see the ad for evil Ernie on his hands like this. And I was like, what the hell is this? I didn't even know what it was. I was like six or seven years old. It, yeah. But it gave me that feel that I imagined that um the youth got with Al Davis and them when they were doing EC. 
Mm-hmm. And um, that's the feeling I had. I was just drawing monsters and monsters. And that is when I knew I wanted to do comics. I'm from Trenton, New Jersey. Yeah. Years later, my cousin Mercer, who got me into comics, and he flips out because I'm in this industry now because he's like, oh, my God, I can't believe you had <laughs> you it. You did it, dude. I did <laughs> you it. did it. You yeah. did it. Right. Yeah. yeah. And cool. I've come to find out he's from New Jersey. And I was like, oh, my God. And then that's when I knew yeah. I had to meet him. So I meet him in 2000. 15 to 16. I want to say it was 16. I met him at Denver Comic Con where I got signed in 15 to Valiant. Yeah. Um, Dinesh, God bless you. Dinesh Dasandasani gave me my start in commercial. Nice. And uh, um, I showed him my stuff. And um, him and Joe Rubenstein was there, two of my Jersey boys. Mm-hmm. Yep, and um, yep. I'm talking to Rubenstein and I'm talking to Polito. I did I just couldn't. I, I wanted <laughs> to get on right there. And, you know, yeah, I yeah. wanted it to happen at that moment. But it kind of didn't, but I go over there. Um, Rubenstein, he goes, stay, stay right here, man. Stay right here. So we go, he goes, Brian, come here. And then Brian <laughs> and Franny, Francesca, Lady Death herself, yep. she goes, uh, go over there. He comes over. And then I got Polito and Rubenstein looking at my portfolio, like analyzing it. Like, I know, I know it's good, <laughs> but it's not good enough, but it's good enough. And um, yeah, Polito yeah. gave me the best advice, Nick. He goes, um, I know you can pencil ink and you can color, Barry. Um, mm-hmm. Grab me by my shoulder real hard. I never did it. And he goes, uh, if you want a job for the rest of your life, just pencil. And that's what I did. And, it, and I've been I'm not, I have not been out of work in comics since he gave me that advice. God bless you. Bro. Nice. Man, yeah, it looks like you had some pretty solid influences and you had that, you had that bug early on. Right. So yeah, it was yeah, really, was really, really early. Cool. Man, um, I did. Mm-hmm. No, go ahead. Now I was going to say, I never had that influence growing up. Like I had no artistic people. Like my mom was artistic a little bit, but like I've never grew up drawing. None of my friends had comics. And so I'm so jealous for you guys that like I hear those early stories of like growing up and like just recreating panels that you liked from your books and stuff and like having that kind of a push early on. That's so cool. Yeah. Remember that time though? Like around that time you were, when you smelt the pulp Mm -hmm. and um, yeah, I mean, I used to draw in the comic, like over the comic pages and, yeah. When you in the beginning, you just you know you just um imitate everything that you see, yeah. and then as you get older, um then you start to form your own what you all little elements of art that you want. I feel I imagine it's the same with writers. Sure. Um, you incorporate those into yourself, and I like cartoons. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I remember when I used to draw like a a, a rip off of Jim Lee and Liefeld and Fortasio, like everybody was everybody doing was that doing in the that. 90s. <laughs> it wasn't. But my friend Wesley Bailey, I'll never yeah. forget the day he brought um this old it was a how to draw book and it was about how to draw cartoons. And he was like, You should look at this. I was like, You don't know what you're talking about. It's all about Jim Lee, man. You don't know what you're talking about. It's about serious right. shit. Just yeah, sucking yeah, yeah. jaws and shit like that. And uh <laughs> I looked at the book and then I'm looking at my Mad Magazine book in tandem with Mad Magazine. And then I just like got hooked on the Mortimer Drucker, Al Cap, sure. all that stuff. And um, I just incorporated that over the years in, into my work after studying like anatomy and shape and form and light and, and stuff like that. Yeah. And now uh, how do you how do you translate those kinds of anatomy lessons and that kind of like form into drawing like Billy? I mean, like, so uh, a, a rabbit that stands like, you know what I mean? Like the anatomy is going to be different. It's going to be weird, but like, there's some similarities there. Right. But you probably learn a lot. A lot right? of similarities in it, Nick. Uh, yeah. Like being hooked on Ninja Turtles. I remember 1991 when um, Playmates released the store, the toy line of Ninja Turtles. Yeah. Right. I still right. remember it was like July the 11th or something. It was my sister's birthday. We go to KB. <laughs> That's funny. And uh, I get oh, KB toys. Uh, remember KB? I remember KB. Sure. <laughs> And uh, I remember Playmates dropped it. I'm a toy boy. Yeah, and uh, yeah. she, um, she, we went, we go to the mall. This is when you can smoke cigarettes in the mall. Yep. Everything smelled like cigarettes everywhere. Yep. I, I see, I, I was like, I, I seen it, it was like heroes and a half shell. And I was like, I got to add them Ninja Turtles. And then after yeah. I got all four of them, I come home. And then a week later, the show airs. And I'm like, what is this? This is the. And yeah. I was hooked on like animal type forms and I sure. was practicing since then. My grades got bad and then my parents took it away and then they, and I, you know, it's a typical thing. 
And um, and then, but you looking at the anatomy what um, um, Eastman and Laird did with the form, mm-hmm. they they basically did regular anatomy in animals, and um, yeah. you you incorporate that with the basic training of learning how to draw the human anatomy. Incorporate that with Billy, um, with the animal form. But the the special thing with Billy is that all those years came up. So, I mean, I, I knew it was the Ninja Turtle samples that I did for IDW is what got Justin's attention to do Mm. Billy the kid because he was going to have me on something else, but he just wanted to make sure I was having fun when I was doing it. Yeah. Um, But you know, when you draw, when I'm doing Billy, you see how I got his toes. Mm -hmm. I could have did it him flat footed like Bugs Bunny, but I decided to do him with his feet up because it would make more, his balance. You know what I mean? It would make more sense. Um, Justin said, everybody should be human form. So I, I got that in my head. And then, you know, if I do a little raccoon, I can have this raccoon down to stature. If I do a yeah. big bull and ox, I can have them big and high up. Yeah. Yep. Um, but all that stuff, it, it comes into play at anatomy. When it yeah. Comes I bet that, I bet that scratches a lot of creative itches too. Right. Cause like right. in, in the, in this series in particular, you're touching a lot of different types of animals. You have obviously like the, like the demented, obi-wan goat character right and then you then you have like the big bull in in issue number six in the very beginning which was a really great bar fight scene and things like that so like there's a lot of cool things that you're doing inside that book that just make it make it pop so much though i do say i mean i mean i'm um, just as my brother i love him and um what he does does influence what i do on the page but um how he writes he allows me to put all me in there yeah um so if i everything's derivative you know so when he says give me a big bull i i think of like let's just do the most like uh uh stereotypical bull country yeah. person that she can oh, sure. do and yeah and he he lets me play like that or or with uh um nibbler with the, the, the squirrel mm-hmm. you know what i mean the cockeyed squirrel or something yep. like that yeah but that's my Warner Brothers coming out. That's my Warner Brothers coming out. I'm a cartoon freak, like freak, freak. Like, well, that's cartoon. good. You can you can you can pull that influence out and that inspiration out and pull it forward into the stuff you love to do. So that's cool. It's, it's like so tongue in cheek, though, Nick. That that like I was like, <laughs> I just don't want to get sued. Like <laughs> like by going to be like that look a little bit too much. But again, everything's derivative. You pull from your Disney and your Warner Brothers and yeah. your um, Tex Avery's and. You put it in a serious situation with blood and guts. You can't lose. Hey, uh, Steamboat uh, Mickey's uh, public domain now, so you can sneak him somehow I was somehow thinking about that, something. but I already seen a couple of people <laughs> fucking around with um, Steamboat Willie. Yeah. I was like, I ain't going to do it. Everybody jumped to. on I that. I want to. Everybody's already jumped on that. It's already Everybody old. jumped on it already. So I was just like, I was already thinking of, of messing around with um, the three little bears. I was thinking about messing around with the three mm. little bears. And had a baby bear. Y'all can try and bite it, but y'all ain't gonna do it like me. <laughs> no, but, but... <laughs> no one, no one can do it like you, man. No one can do it like you. When question for you, when when Justin gives you like a, a script or anything, do you thumbnail like the, the no. issue out? Like what's your, what's your regular process when you're getting a script like that and you gotta you gotta put some something down, right? What are you looking yeah. at? Yeah, uh, he um, again, he gives me the the most freedom. Uh, yeah. I, I work with writers from. Brandon Easton um, with Transformers mm-hmm. to um, Mike Barron. But Justin, how he plays is that um, he, he gives me a script. It's kind of loose, but um, as long as I get everything he wants in it, I go straight to board. I don't do no thumbnails, no nothing. Um, I, I read yeah. his script over and over and over again about three, four times. When I do apply myself to the script, next thing I know, um, I read his script so many times. It's like I'm playing in a movie in my head because sometimes what's going to work <laughs> on paper doesn't work yeah. on the words in on cinema with the paper. Sure. So I just go straight to the board, man. I like it raw and visceral like that. If not, I can't really feel it. You know what I mean? It's like when I'm yeah. on the stage rhyming um, and I'm freestyling, I, you know what I mean? Straight off the top of my dome, it's that type of feeling, that type of riffing. You know what I mean? Yeah. And, and do you, when you're starting to do the initial pencils and stuff, are you inking right away? Or are you doing a pencil through, are you penciling the, all the pages and then going back to ink or like? With Justin, you... I always do it all pencil first. Um, okay. I, just, I, just I, I always, all. but 
Yeah. yeah, just straight up because I like the process of him. If we have to change something and he wants me to change something, oh, well, it's, it's easier when it's not in. Yeah, do it in yeah. pencil. <laughs> when it comes to my books on Four yeah. Color Demon Press, you know mm-hmm. what I mean? When it comes to on my books, I, I'll do it, but I just go straight to ink. Like, I don't got to wait. You know what I mean? I, I yeah. don't have to wait. But my writer, um, Mike Duke, on my stuff, and I got other writers too. Um, it's, it's more freedom and I, and I get to do it faster. It's faster when I do it, this process, but we go through the method, the normal way of yep. pencil it. He approves the pencils. Then I ink it later. So I, I pencil out the whole 20 pages, 22 pages, 25 pages, whatever. And then I go back the next month and ink it for two to three weeks, you know, man. Yeah, that 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 that's insane. Yeah, I know. I know there's a lot of differences out there for or, uh, artists, you know. And that's I I didn't even think about that really about if there's any changes you needed to make. You mm-hmm. know, once it's inked, it's inked, man. It's it's inked, inked. You got to redo the page at that point. Yeah, it's such a pain <laughs> in the butt. I remember one time I was I was working with Mike Barron, yeah. and he uh uh had a situation where we had to change something, but Mike Barron taught me the old school ways how they used to do it Marvel and DC. He was like, well, don't redraw the whole page, silly. Just draw a panel, cut it out, and t- paste it on there. I was like, oh, okay, whatever. I'm not, I'm not going to tell you how long into my comic book reading career it took me before I realized there were shenanigans like that going on in the creative yeah. side of things and like uh, and like Zipatone <laughs> and all that stuff. I was like, damn, these guys can draw dots, man. I love Zipatone. <laughs> Zipatone, I – um. I was thinking of incorporating Zipatone in my work, but I just need the right project to do so. I just don't want to do it because the only one that I know that's doing it right now is um, Dan Panosian. He's using a lot of Zipatone, given his work that old school feel, which I really love. Yeah. But I, it got to be the right one. Like if I'm doing a noir book, I will fuck around with Zipatone for sure. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, there's there would be a lot of opportunity for that, especially in like a black and white color scheme, yeah. or something like that, with some lines and stuff. And Ooh, yeah, that'd be God. that'd be insane. Well, mouth watering. <laughs> I can already I can already see the book. So yeah, right? <laughs> I got my mouth watering up. <laughs> you mentioned four color demons, man. What what what's it? Let the people know what that's all about. Oh yeah, oh, four color demons. Uh, um, Brian Quinn off the Impractical Jokers. If you guys are familiar with that show, <laughs> um, it's still airing and everything. Uh, he came up with the club. Um, tell him Steve Dave is um, Kevin Smith's best friends, Brian Johnson and Walter Flanagan. Um, yeah. Walter Flanagan drew Cacophony with Kevin. Okay. Um, also does another book, Knights of the Fifth Dimension, War the Undead. That's out on Blue Juice Comics now. Please pick that up. <laughs> and yep. uh, he came up with the comic book club. We're basically a comic book club for comic book nerds. It's like a biker club for comic book nerds. Oh, and uh, yeah. after comic book, man, we he, he kind of kind of got the ball rolling on the pod and I kind of got frustrated because it really wasn't nothing happening on the comic side so much because the guys are so busy with their podcast. Tell them, Steve Dave. Yeah. yeah. And our movies and all that stuff. Sure. And clerks and, our, and everything. So I say, you know what? Uh, I've been doing artwork for the um, for the club, for Tell Them Steve Dave for the longest. So I say, you know what? I'm going to just make a just whole comic book label out of the Four Color Demons and really make this comic book, man. Yeah. And then, uh, you know what I mean? Because I ain't like oh, yeah. how they was talking about my show. No, I mean, not my show, but <laughs> Kevin's show when it was airing, like, they don't know comics. I was like, they got a, the most famous comic book shop in the world. They got to know something. But, yeah, you got yeah. to, man. Yeah. The stash yeah. is the place. I mean, I, I'm down for every comic shop on the planet. I advocate for brick and mortar. That's me. But the four color demons is like a purest thing for me, man. Yeah. I, I, four colors is four colors. It, it brings everybody together. And, and yeah, we roll around like we badasses with love, you know, right? <laughs> when we're really not. But you're but, just a bunch of comic book nerds at the end of the day. <laughs> you know, we're fucking nerds, man. <laughs> That's hilarious. Nobody's beating each other up with chains. <laughs> not yet. You got to find a rival comic book gang somewhere nearby. I, there is not. I seen somebody come up with something like four color things. I was like, yo, y'all biting me. But when I see people biting it, that means I got to double down and come out with my stuff more. You know, hey, I got to yeah. come out with more. It, it, yeah. It's imitations, most sincerest form of flattery, right? It is. It is. <laughs> I love the four color demons. We're a great comic book community. Everybody's yeah. nice to each other. It's a place where everybody can come to. No discrimination, segregation, yeah. um, none of that culture war bullshit. Everything, everybody gets along under the banner of comics. And I love yeah. it. Yeah. That's awesome, dude. That's so good to hear. Man, I wanted to talk about a little bit about your work ethic because one of my morning routines right now is I wake up, I check my email, I check my Instagram feed. And inevitably, <laughs> more often than not, I'm seeing a damn big post from you at 6 a.m. my time with I your board it. right there saying, 
I'm up already. What are you guys doing? I, right? I, I love that. I can do that because, yeah, um, yeah. you know, what I used to hate when I was younger. I used to want to know how this whole thing happens. You know, like how does one make a comic book? And yeah. uh, with my fans, I get to show them bit by bit, chunk by chunk uh, of yeah. uh, from the pencils to um, what you got to do to have a life of your own and yeah. get your work done. I got kids, man. Like they yeah. in school. I got autistic kids. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? I got a kid that graduated um, high school. Uh, they, I, I, I'm a full-time dad, you know? Yep. And, and so, so I got to get my work done to pay these bills. And so if I can show everybody, because I hate the excuse, oh, how can you do that when I got a family? No fucking excuses with Barry yeah. McClain Jr. I'll you show you like... <laughs> Yeah. No excuses. We <laughs> you finally get the job though, Nick, that you always wanted. Yeah. And you're gonna cop out just because time? Make time. You make know it. what I mean? Mm-hmm. Make time. You make time to have sex, you make time to do comics. You know? <laughs> Yep. Yeah. We do all the important things, but yeah, dude, it, I just want to let you know, it's, it's kind of like a motivating thing for me. Thank you. It's soon, Cause I'm here. I'm not even out of bed yet. And you're already taking a, you're already like, cha- you're already <laughs> I'll be challenged. at like four 30, Nick. Like- you're, you're killing me. And you're, and you're an hour behind me and mm-hmm. I'm like, okay, I'm still in bed. This guy's getting up and he's, <laughs> I'm up. in bed and you're burning lead. Right. So it's I'm like, on, right. man. It's I'm like, dead up burning lead till I'm yeah. dead. Like early in the morning, got my coffee going my, um, before my wife go out, and go yeah. to work. The kids be up. Um, I'm already doing stuff already, so that way I can tend to, that, to the family. Yeah. Um, and then by that time, I mean, um, I'm well into my work day. I got at least um, a page and a half done, depending on whatever the writer gives me. They'd be like a billion demons and a million angels go. Yeah, like, oh, here we go. But uh, yeah. I, I got a good process now. I, I, when I'm in my groove, when I start a book, I'm in. I'm in it. Um, I'm on page twenty right now of thirty mm-hmm. of the of uh, the Order of Dane right now, which yep. is going to drop, which is my launch book for the Four Color Demon Press. So. Hell yeah! When, when can we expect that? When do you think? Oh, no pressure. Take your time, man. Oh uh, no! But I'm anxious. But I'm anxious. You know but, I'm anxious. <laughs> but I'm anxious. There's always pressure, but I want it. Out in a in a, in a in a in a reasonable time. I'm thinking about probably a month or two when I launched a Kickstarter campaign. Oh, and then when I do a Kickstarter, you know how I do. I, I like Kickstarter, yeah. and I love um, what it does for us. I love the fact that it um, brings ideas to people that we never seen before, and gives people. It's like it's a little bit of socialism before the capitalism. First, I got to <laughs> show you what it is, and if the crowd funds it, then I get it published. That yeah. doesn't mean that I'm going to go back and keep chomping at the bit to kickstart it all the time because I'm out on the road selling the books. Yeah. Um, me and the company take half for the profit and then we just go and um, and make the deal and make the sales off of that. I don't know how other people do it, but that's just how I do it. You know, it's fair. Yeah. It's fair. I've seen I've seen a, obviously a big push for Kickstarter. It's just so damn convenient for like the yeah. consumer just to check it out because you can obviously yeah. you can you can dump as much information on there as you want. It, which gives us a tease and then hopefully it gets funded and great. It goes forward. Once my book gets funded, I am, um, I'm an advocate for how um, Tom mom is uh, my, my editor in chief at blue juice. Mm-hmm. Uh, if he don't want to publish nothing, unless it's done, you got to have a whole book done for him to even do it. Oh, and I, I agree like with all that because like, it stops yeah. the wait and the stall of it coming out. You kickstart it, then you're waiting months for the shit to hit the rack yeah, yeah. and that loses steam in the project. And I don't like when that happened. Every project I ever did, unfortunately, I don't know how everybody else get that off with shitty talent, <laughs> but they get to have their book come out. Me, when Barry, uh, I got to get kickstarted. I'm like, is it because I'm good and you want to exploit me or is it um, you don't believe that my shit will sell? Yeah. I don't know what it is, but I go, I'm kickstarting it one time, finish the book, bring it out. Then we repeat the process again. Um, so with Order of Dane, there's only six books. It's like a only movie. that's that's fine. Yeah. It's not it, no no good story is 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 like is too long and no bad story is too short, right? It's like yeah. it's and like I don't it, wanna, I don't, I don't care how many issues a run is. It's just as long as you give me a good beginning, middle, and end, and some you know fire I heart appreciate in the middle, that, brother. Then yeah, I didn't great. want to inundate you. I, I don't want you being bored as fuck when you um reading the whole thing because next thing you know, 
um, you're going to be like, oh, my God, man, like how long, how many, when is the story ends? You know what I mean? Dude, there's too many books out there right now. Some, too some, many. Some 12 issue runs. Justin that... with Billy, he mm. let, he, 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 oh, man, he's a master of cliffhangers. And he, he, he's a master at cliffhangers to the point that we literally had Billy hanging off a cliff after one of the first run. That's right. That's right. <laughs> so <laughs> write your way about that bitch. You All know right. What I, mean? I mean, you brought it up. So speaking of cliffhangers, we had Billy number six. Yeah. Um, what a cliffhanger. Billy number six. Oh my God. Well, it was so fun doing that book. Um, I can't give um, too many spoilers away on that. Yeah. You know, I can't. Yep, I can't yep. Oh, I understand. I understand. But, Just know that a bunch of us are waiting for it how about that i know <laughs> i'm waiting for the script too so i mean like as soon as i get the script man y'all ah, got it so, you know so how fast i go on this um i don't really want people to forget because the attention span is just so small for the readership yeah. and everybody so why uh present it um fuck a preview like this the preview i give you the preview every day yeah. when you see me drawing it that's the preview of the book yeah um, but again, this is like what, how me and Justin do our thing. That is totally separate from what I'm doing with Four Color Demons. So that's Absolutely. Like Absolutely. But when I'm doing with, with uh, Four Color Demon Press, I'm going to have a Kickstarter. Oh, my God. Where do you see the goddamn Chromium cover? Uh, like, <laughs> I'm going to have a Chromium cover. Oh, chrom and nice. one, one issue. Issue one. Yep. One single issue. After that, we're coming out with a trade. That's oh, it. Nice. I want to bring the value back to issue ones. Yeah. Issue one means shit now. Like nobody cares about issue one. Yeah. Um, by the time you get through, I don't you know how many issue ones I've been through that the writer never had lost steam and never finished and got beyond issue three. I'm yeah. like, oh my god. It's, yeah, it's like a, it's like a pilot. It. I got sick of it. Yeah, it's like a pilot for a show, right? It's like, yeah, you can you, you cranked out one great thing and got us hooked, and then it kind of like you got, you got you hooked, and then you just let them leave people by the wayside. <laughs> And I, I, I'm tired of breaking y'all heart and being a part of stuff that break people heart. I don't want to, in order for this industry to change, we actually had to do things that's different and bet on yourself. So yeah, yeah. why would you be in comics? Yeah, we want to make money. I know I want to make money. I'm in it to make money. I'm a capitalist, yeah. baby. I ain't yeah. going to do shit. You got a family you got to take care of, of course. You know, but uh, I, I don't want to let you down. Um, I, it's been so many um, projects that I've had that um, fell by the wayside because um, people didn't want to believe in the way I did business. I'm the one that's out there selling it. The writers be sitting in there um, jerking off stale fish. You know what I mean? Like I, I'm out here meeting and greeting, shaking hands and, and, and making a property out state to state. Um, and that's very important to me because we live yeah. in a business where you can't avoid the readership. You got to go out and talk to them when yeah. we got computers and AI trying to take our fucking job. You know what that's I mean? Very true. So we, a computer can't shake your hand. A computer no. can't uh, make your kids smile. The kids right. love me. Um, yeah. the kids love me. And, uh, yeah. and somebody was like, well, the parents are the ones with the money. I was like, well, the parents spend the money on the kids. I make comics. For I, th kids. I think the people who use that argument don't have kids because they, they don't know that the kids, kids. the they, kids are very probably, much in charge. They, I don't know what they're they talking probably about. Probably don't got kids, Nick, because if they have they had kids, they don't know the kids take our money. They oh, be yeah, like <laughs> yeah, oh yeah, yeah. My daughter, man, she's she. When I take her to a con and she's walking around in cosplay and she's doing stuff, man, I'm like, your daughter's in scouts too, right? Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. They so, know the game. I mean, they we know both the game. got Girl Scouts and stuff, yep. so you know how it is, man. Oh, yeah. Like they they always involved in something. Well, one, one thing I really like about your social media and just your presence in general is you have a way of uh, holding the industry accountable, right? And you were to. you were just touching on some of that stuff too about yeah. you know, some uh -huh. of the dangerous trends or things that you yeah, see. That I, you the reason why I feel I can do that, Nick, is because uh, everybody be sucking dick. Oh, excuse me. Uh, everybody be kissing butt <laughs> yeah. uh, to get where they got to go. I don't, I, I, I mean, I'll be hearing it when I'm at the shows and the um, creators be talking to the other creators. I'm like, this ham handed glad bag crap i'll be seeing favor for favors because mm -hmm. you it's like a recycle cabal of people doing the same thing picking the same artists and the same writers i'll be like and all yeah no wonder everything's stale because y'all use the same stuff same people all the yeah. time so um even when it comes to funding this stuff uh, uh, even when it comes to funding this stuff, I see how people drop the ball. They'll, they'll yeah. take a thousands and thousands of dollars from you, and don't you don't you won't see the book for two years. Yeah, 
is that there's been, fair? There's been a few of those. Yeah. That's yeah, not yeah. fair. That's not fair to me. No. Uh, especially when I got to eat. You know yeah. what I mean? So, or or you get this one uh, with, the, with, the, with the culture war stuff. Um, just because mm-hmm. I'm black, I don't want people giving me a job because I'm black. I want people to give me a job because I kick the most ass. Right. You know? Yeah. Uh, that's the yeah. only way things are going to change. I, I remember one time Somebody was like, hey, man, I'm looking for a black artist to do a black book. I ain't drawing that racist ass shit, man. Like, what is that? That's like Comics Gate with a black face on it. You know, right, like, right, it's right. It's the same thing. I quit a book one time because uh, I told this one creator, I was like, man, you bring out that January 6th character, I'm going to lead this book. This dude came out with a January 6th superhero. I was out, man, because I... I'll, I'm down with bipartisanship. I don't care if you're yeah. a Trumper and you so, uh, a super liberal. I don't care. I do if if the message is positive. Yeah. I'm in. I'm yeah. in. I don't care. That's just it, your view. I it, don't matter to me. And that's the cool but, thing about I mean, comics. Start, yeah. Yeah. But you can't um, politicize something that is made to bring people together. Yeah. You just can't do that. Even if you, even if Superman saving the president in the book, is just he's saving the somebody a victim from the bad guys he's now, saving human uh, right the yeah. lines are so blurred you're trying to make yeah. all of the the superheroes vi- the villain superheroes no yeah. no yeah. That, when i seen joker getting a fucking oscar i was like oh this game's going to shit it's so subversive it's so subversive yeah i was thinking the other day that's the kind of beauty about uh there's a certain beauty about comic books because there's not a lot of mediums out there that can have representation from all different kinds of creators and whatnot, but it's also in a medium that's very, it's quick. It's not, it's way quicker than movies in theory, Mm -hmm. right? It's way quicker than like television shows and cheaper to put out. And we have all these amazing voices and creative talents that are putting together all these different perspectives. And uh, that's just a fun part about the medium, I think too, but it can also be uh, um, just as corrupt and just as, you know, cliche is like any other medium for sure. But it's a unique medium. Right. I couldn't say it better. Yeah. Everybody want to call it woke. I Mm. call it lazy. Um, yeah, sometimes you, that's the same thing. Yeah, yeah, it's lazy when you um want to just placate to a, su- a, a sub class of people or just a class of people just to get your point across. Mm-hmm. How are you going to you what you want to do is bring people to the table like Superman does, like Ninja Turtles does, like yeah. Batman does, like Dragon Ball Z does. It brings everybody oh. to the table. Rest, I'm rest, not going to have just like black man and just like have all my white friends be like well i just i can't read this I'm like oh no 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 let me explain to you and then boom they, they're gone i lost i lost fans you know what i mean yeah. i want to i want to bring hope to people and um yeah. and, and have other kids whether it's a little indian girl or a little white boy over there little oh, old old black man over there everybody come <laughs> over and, and enjoy comics that's what i want you know, bring, um, just that's bring what your, I grew up with. I ain't have to grow up with that shit. Why should my son and my daughters have to grow up with that stuff? Well, yep, that's very true. That's very true. It's just like a different time right now, and everything's a little bit sensitive right now, and everyone's trying to yeah. navigate their world and try to make sense of what the hell's going on right now. So yeah, it's crazy. It's crazy. Bit. And I mean, comics is one thing that can make sense out of everything because it's fantasy. Yeah. And, um, why inject too much reality in the fantasy? Yeah. Um. Uh, like Gilly the Kid is a perfect example. Um, the um, the the tone that he hits on that is just enough of uh of the uh of reality in um surrealism. But when you see me with like little muskrats running around, you know, you'd be like, oh, yeah. it, you're teaching me a lesson about faith. <laughs> but I yeah, you're not yeah. shoving religion down my throat. That's the beauty of the book. That's a very that's a very good point because it's it it's steeped in like mythology like that yeah. and which which is the beauty of it and it comes across very clearly right yeah. it, it, in that whole thing and it's about transcending and it's about overcoming the odds and it's about taking yeah. on your, your Don't creator. Don't you see how many times he gets his ass beat like and he gets back up like <laughs> isn't that what heroism is? <laughs> right, yeah, it's a classic hero story, right? Like Nick, facing I, those, facing those demons. I always be thinking, I'm like, damn man, how I'm gonna have him beat up this time? And I imagine. <laughs> I, that's how it is drawing Spider-Man. You know what I mean? Like yeah. how much we can have Peter get beat up and oh, get that's a whole up. other conversation. You no. Know? 
<laughs> that's a whole nother conversation. Yeah, but um, we, we, we started talking about your book that you're doing right now. So can you elaborate a little bit on like what that's going to look like or what the, what, yeah, at least um, the premise of it? I was forming Order of Dane for a minute because um, I was always uh, I was enthralled with the thought of a, a black Viking. And they, uh, I heard they were called Thanes or something like that. The Moors were called Thanes. And I was doing a little research because I, I was like, but I just wanted that type of purity when it comes to um, the, the mythology of castles and tassels. I love Excalibur mm. and stuff like that. Thundercats, yeah. which was basically like castles and tassels mixed with Star Wars. <laughs> sure. Um, yeah. And like He-Man universe was the same. Mm -hmm. Like you get lasers and phasers with swords and stuff. Right. It was, yeah, it and, was a weird mix, wasn't it? Yeah. Wasn't yeah. it? Yeah. yeah, yeah and yeah. so um, I go, and I, and I love rhythm and blues and I love heavy metal. And I, and, I, and, and I wanted to show the bridge between those things. So we got a hero whose dad was like a Muddy Waters type character who yeah. tries to save his mother's soul from death itself. Some magical guitar strings. Nice. And, like um, but his son, Dane, he's the metalhead, though. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? From New Jersey. And so <laughs> yep. he meets the Dirty Devil. The devil has a, um, uh, a mission for him. And then we go through a Rip Warren adventure to like basically like the nine circles of, of – of, of, of fantasy it's like a play on dante's inferno inferno sure i had ryan shrunk get the whole outline at first but he couldn't write it and then i um my friend mike duke he was back to to um to writing and so i go finally i can get my one of my favorite writers that no one's ever heard of yet yeah. until now man he, he he's killing this script right now he's killing it right now and uh, cool. if you love heavy metal you're gonna love this book you're gonna love it Dude, some of the some of the music influences that I know that you're you're always listening to music from what I can understand when you're when you're inking and stuff. So I can just imagine that stuff's just like pouring into your creative process yeah. while you're doing it, which um, probably is why you have such a cool edge in your line work and everything. I appreciate inking, that because so. I, I do incorporate the music a lot in my work, especially the heavy yeah. metal. Um, I'm I'm a lead singer of bands. I've been the lead singer of Sweet. bands. Yeah. I've been in the heavy metal since Headbangers Ball when I was little. You know, yeah. um, when the when the ball became super rock, I was like the end of my world. But <laughs> remember, I, I was like, "What the hell is super rock?" Oh, man, it's man, oh, showing my age there. But yeah. yeah, when I'm listening to Lemmy, I'm listening to um to Pantera, um Black Dahlia Murder, Corn. It doesn't matter. Whatever music fuels me, yeah. I I I like to convey that. That's all I listen to while I'm drawing this book. Um, when I'm drawing That's Billy. Cool. I listen to um, stuff like, you know, like Blake Shelton's God Country. You know what I mean? God's <laughs> Country. Like, just to get that feel of the It's books. a vibe. Yeah. It's a vibe. It's a total yeah. vibe. When I do my book, Sifu, it's a martial arts book. It used to be called Q-Ball, but it's going to be called Sifu now. Yeah. Um, I'm listening to Wu-Tang. You know, course, I'm listening yeah, sure. to MLP. You sure. know what I mean? I'm listening like, real hard. I love all my music hard, even though, I, you know, you catch me listening to Perfect Circle to Bjork. You know, it doesn't really matter. But I love music and I want that being conveyed on the page on this book because no one's going to believe me if they don't feel it on the page. That's no true. one's going to believe me. I, already, yeah. I mean, I'm in a metal community heavy. I mean, I'm at every show. You, you catch me yeah. at a clutch show. You know what I mean? Stuff oh, yeah. like that. But. That's cool. I, I love the idea of marrying uh, comics with with music. There's another uh, Ron V does this a lot lately as well. Uh, writer Ron V, and he did a couple different books uh, where he incorporated that 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 flow. There was another book you would love if you haven't seen it yet. I think it's from ah oh, shit, I can't remember. It might be from Behemoth. It's called Vermilion. You probably you, Vermilion. You, Vermilion. And so what they do, they took the Slipknot song Vermilion, and, I love that song, and though. they comic. They made a comic out of it, it's right? Crazy. And so it's a one issue. So like Corey, Corey let that happen. I mean, I guess, dude. It's I, I mean, mean the, the lyrics are it, the lyrics are in the letters. Like that's that's what it is. So it's, I, it's, I, it's crazy. I'm I'm going to check that book out because yeah, check out when I did order a Dane. My whole vibe, my whole thing was going to the hero was going to be Villa Bella of him uh, mm. was going to be the hero. Yeah. Um, but I already had this one character called Kid Jersey. And I decided to make him the hero and change his name instead. So um, right. every book that I'm coming out with Four Color Demon Press is basically my ideas. And yeah. I'm hiring writers to write them for me but instead of the other way around, the writers hiring me. I, I go, yeah. no, man, let's just change this because I'm, I'm a bevy of ideas from Valor Vixens. I like that. And that was yeah. like Girl G.I. Joe. 
yeah. uh, uh, Order of Dane, um, Grey Bebe Mucabre, because I was like, I'm tired of Latino characters being all fucking ass teched out all the time. I'm like, <laughs> does everybody got to be a fucking ass tech warrior all the time? Right, right. Like, what is that? Right, like, right. I, 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 I tell that concept, my Grey Bebe Mucabre, because he's a cop, who does martial mm-hmm. arts. Um, I tell him the concept, my own Latino friend be like, where's that book? Where the fuck is that book? Like, yeah, yeah, because yeah. I want stuff to make you feel good about yourself, not something yeah. that's going to placate to you. Just say, this Latino, go buy it. Like, no, I want you to be like, yo, this is me. This right. fucking me right here. Like, even yeah. order a game. This one guy who I had, oh man, if I, woo, I'm going to tell you who this person is off camera and off mic. You're going to be like, really? I had this motherfucker <laughs> nice. about to write the book. And then he goes, he says the dumbest thing I ever heard in my life, the weakest thing a writer could ever say. Yeah. I can't write a black guy. What? <laughs> Dane? Dane is a metalhead. Like, you, right, you write right. a metalhead like a metalhead. Yeah. Guess Not what? A black guy. The color of his skin it doesn't, doesn't, matter doesn't really matter. what color he is, it's, he or yeah. she is. You write him like the thing they into. Although that reminds me of that Seinfeld episode where they didn't know what to do with Elaine and they yes, were like, we're they're like, like we haven't, shit. we haven't, we haven't put her in yet. It's like, what would she say? What would she, and she was out of the pilot or whatever. <laughs> yes. You got it. It's not about the color, man. It's about yeah, what yeah. they do. It's like, they're saying like, I can't hire. It's like, if Marvel hire me, like they do with all the black kids. Yeah. Every time they put them on some black guy come, hey man, put them on Mr. Terrific. Put them yeah. on Black Panther. Put them yeah. on Blue Cage. That's the first thing you do. I can't get Booster Gold and Blue Beetle. I'll do a great <laughs> buddy cop story on that. I can't get that. That would be fire but too. I, I, that's not. That's that, that's where they, that's why they're failing. That, that's honestly yeah. why they're getting boring. Because I yeah. love Marvel and DC. I still love those companies, but um, it's yeah. very sparse. You got to get certain artists to be on there. Like you get somebody like. Um, Pinoche and Capullo, or something like that, Snyder, or something like that. Yeah. Um, um, Tim, my man Tim on there, who does doing Supergirl now. Mm-hmm. You get him on there, I'm in, I want to read it. Uh, it, it's easy that I'm an easy sell that way because they do good work. Yeah, that's yeah. a lesson that I learned. That's a lesson I learned, uh, getting in the comics because in the beginning I was following characters, and yeah. you, your heart gets broken pretty quickly when you do that. I, I think so. So, but you need to get that exposure to figure out who you're vibing with creatively right. speaking. Right. And so as soon as you figure out who those people are in the community, right. like you start following them, because if you like that voice, that representation, if you like the way that they write characters right. in general, then you're always going to love what they put. You might not love everything, but like, yeah. you're not going to be as heartbroken as you would if you just read Spider-Man all the time. And the, that creative team changes every five years or whatever yeah. it is. And you're just, you're just like, ah, oh, I hated that 40 issue told. run. I'm gonna tell you the only reason I um, read uh, Jonah Hex was because of um, Paul Miyati and um, Justin Gray. That's and the only Justin reason why I read those books. I, I didn't even care about that character until I, yeah. I, I found out who it was because I was already a fan of, um, uh, of Gray's and, and, and um, Paul Miyati, even though I'm like kind of a friend of the family. But I, yeah. I I used to read it and I was just like, man, these guys really know how to scare the shit out of me. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. And that's why I liked it. You yeah. know, like not because it's them. I can give two fucks about <laughs> that. It's just the fact that they know what they're doing. And every time I read their stuff, they make me feel like this. Yeah. And I like having fun. If it ain't fun, I ain't going to read it. That's a, that's a, that's another great point too. Not only do you, do you vibe with like their, their style and everything like that, but it's the feeling that they're able to recreate every time that they put something out every and they time. do it in a slightly different way that fits with that character, that storyline. Yeah. And you just hit, yeah, it hits you. Yeah, like, I mean, point. guys like that. I mean, I'm a, they're just examples. They can't do me wrong when I read their stuff. It's like yeah. I always have fun. Um, certain people, like, they used to be fun, but until they start playing culture war, then it ain't fun yeah. no more. So yeah. I, mean, I can't buy with Or shit. when they now, get stretched too thin. Yeah. yeah. Or they're doing five or six things and they got a sub stack and they got this and they got that and they had some success and then they right. start burning themselves out. Right. They burn themselves out. And that's what I try not to do, especially with this. I, I, I want my stuff done in a in a fast prompt way. I'm built for speed. My yeah. style is built for speed. Um, yeah. just like the song. <laughs> yeah. But everything I do, because yeah. I, I know I'm I'm in a field that the computer's trying to take it away, trying to take my job away. So yeah. if I can pro- overproduce and be more creative than a computer, than a couple of words on an app, 
You mm-hmm. can't fade me because I can't. And the computer's not going to shake your kid's hand and make a silly joke about the kid's parent and the parent's face like I do with the kids about the parents. And then the parents be like, thank you for making them smile. Yeah. And thank you for making me smile. And a uh, computer will never get that. No, no. And speaking about your speaking about your speed and everything, I remember so like on your feeds, I see you doing a lot of like other like extra work, right? Like, yeah. I, you were you were doing like a DBZ thing, so rest in peace, uh, Toriyama on that. And um, I saw you doing some like Harry Potter stuff in the past. And I saw you doing like all these other things. Are those things just warm ups for you? Are they commissions? Are they like side, you know, pin ups or whatever? I do a lot like, of commission work. I do a yeah. lot of commission work. Uh, I'm doing one right now for a lawyer. I'm doing nice. um, their artwork for their for their logo. Um, I'm doing oh, one cool. for the state of Colorado right now. Um, I'm redoing a logo for the state of Colorado. Um, but when it comes to those pinups, I like, you can draw anything you want when you're an artist, you know what I yeah, mean? Yeah, and yeah. why not get that itch off? If I, I, I'm doing, I do lines of my pinup work. So when I'm out, if nobody wants to buy my comic, you can buy a pinup, you yeah. know what I mean? Buy a print. And, um, it's like yeah. extra money, you know what I mean? Sure. It's like extra money. Um, and nobody, and, and it shows people a chance to see me draw these characters that they would never get to see me draw. Like, Otherwise, Big Trouble yeah. Little China? Like, uh, <laughs> the, the Last Dragon? Like, like you would never get yeah. to see that type of stuff. Oh, right. Yeah, that was a, that was a few months ago. I forgot about that one. Yeah, yeah. They're it's so a, fun to do. And yeah. I'm a big more Drucker fan, like I said before. And, yeah. and I get to scratch that itch real quick doing that, that type of stuff. I, I loved, I deeply, deeply, deeply love doing those type of pinups. Yeah. Um, and then it also drums in business because when people see me doing um, drawing Daniel Ratcliffe, they'd be like, hey, you know what else would be cool? Hey, how much is this? And then that's just more money. Yeah. Um, I, I get paid a lot of commissions is a big part of my uh, my thing, my my financial. Yeah. Gain. Um, yeah. Besides, you know, the book sales and everything like that and public appearances and stuff. Like yeah. That. Well, I can vouch on your on your commission uh, quality because I have I have Thank you. I have <laughs> two I have two original. I have two pages that you've done for Billy the Thank Kid. You. And I have I have this one that you sent me. You, you must Whoa, remember this one. That was fun. Oh, I almost forgot all about so, that one, dude. Yeah. Yeah. That was and, a good mashup. You love that no. other one. What's killing the children? Was yes. that and what's killing the children? Billy and what's killing the children at the same time was killing it when they came out. Dude. It was. I remember. So forgive me, guys, because some children sucks right now. But but the, back in the day, this that book was insane. And this was like, it was insane. It was so good. I, I it was really, so good. I, I, I deeply I appreciate love that, that creative team. I, I, I like that creative. That's the yeah, thing about us comic book artists. We don't hate on each other. Yeah. We, when we see each other doing something good, we pump each other up. Yeah. It's the ones that are, are wasting people time and money in yeah. the readership. Then the people I'll be talking about all the time coming after. Mm-hmm. If you know you're doing your job and you're doing a good book and you're doing your shows and showing up, yeah, um, I'm not talking about you. Right? Yeah, 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 yeah. As as a Wednesday warrior, and I'm I'm reading 15 to 20 books a week. It's it, yes. it, 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 I I appreciate the books that that make me feel like a I got my money's worth. Yeah. And and B, I feel like there's progression and we're going somewhere with the story. I really hate when we have three or four issues and I'm just like, all right, we're we're essentially in the same spot we were four issues ago. We have no <laughs> development and story and stuff like that. So like, yeah, that's always a hard thing when you're you gotta move that shit along, um, yeah. especially when like uh, if I find like. I mean, writers do this. I mean, there's no slight to none of y'all, my fuckers. No, but, like yeah. um, you if have I see uh, uh, the writer dragging his feet, I'm like, okay, we got to move them out of this scene. Yeah. Uh, okay, and that's my job. I don't even ask. I just do it. And then, or it, from your like, perspective, you can you can introduce some cool shit in there, right? Yeah. And like make it make it make that boring dialogue or that moment flash a little bit more. So even if the writing is yeah. lagging a little bit there, you can make it pop a little bit more, I would imagine. Every time. I don't um, know. I'm not an artist, but I would just imagine that's no, a cool but you're bit. saying the yeah. right thing. No, yeah. Nick, you got it. You yeah. know it. You it's read all about pacing. Comics, you know what's going yeah. on, man. Yeah. Um, because I'm I, if I'm having somebody getting interrogated in the inter- interrogation room holding a cup of coffee, I can make that exciting as well. So that's my or job. Or somebody could be during conversation, they'd be lighting a cigarette and there's different panels mm-hmm. and different composition. Like there's movement, right? There's there's yes. a, there's pacing in the writing and there's also pacing in the art. And mm-hmm. if you have slow writing, you can make up for it sometimes and keep it engaging and, and flashy. You know, what's, you know, what you know what's so bad? And what's even worse though, Nick, is when you got, you probably have a, a good writing and then stiff art. Like the person, they're like, they ain't even moving the camera around. Yeah. Or, uh, you know, 
or or you get you having like you draw high energy like myself and the writing is just like really y'all still talking about the same thing it's been yeah. like 12 pages y'all still talk yeah. about the same shit it's a balance yeah it's a balance you know yeah. and i try to choose my writers to, um especially on the on four color demon press stuff yeah as thus you know like i got a lot of competition out there and um i got people saying they four color fiends instead of four color demons and i got ai art i got a lot of people to battle <laughs> Uh, I got culture wars to battle. I got to make sure that my books are as exciting than any of the trash that's out here. And there's a lot of trash. I'll be like, but that dude do Ninja Turtles after what I've been through? But it's, it's okay. Because that's when I just come out with one Ninja Turtle pin up that just blow everything this motherfucker do out. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. you know, it's their loss, not mine. You know, I can do whatever I want. Yeah. I do my own books. Um, yeah. I just do it and tell my editor to be like, Barry, don't do that. <laughs> Well, I think you have the work ethic and the talents and the platform and everything to get on a lot of people's radar. And so I'm just Thanks, like, I'm just glad to uh, be, you know, be able to hook up with you here and, and, and oh, spread the word you. a little bit on like, dude, there's more. This hobby is so huge hobby yeah. for me. Lifestyle yeah. for you. It's like it's so huge. There's so many people out there that just yeah. need a spotlight and need that extra push, you know, that one click away it. mentality. You know what I mean? So like, man, it's, really it's, it's, that's it, crazy. Man. You, you guys like you, guys and girls like you are like invaluable to the industry, just like the actual brick and mortar itself. Yeah. Um, when Four Color Demons um, does come out, because the launch book is Order of Dane, um, when mm -hmm. we got everything out, um, the brick and mortar tour is the first leg of it that I always do. I do the nice. brick and mortar tour before I do the cons. Um, the little yeah. shows matter too, you know. Oh, like, yeah. Yeah. It's important to me. Getting in front of anybody, you know what uh -huh. I mean? Is is just the most important thing. Sure. Because you never know, you never know what the next person who the next person is that's gonna be coming to your booth or watching. And the I video like people. Or, I like talking yeah, to people. Yeah. I don't I'm yeah. not socially awkward. So I like um I, I am awkward, but I'm not socially awkward. Like yeah, I yeah, like yeah. hearing people's story and talk. Like when you at my table, I'll be having to make people leave and like, okay, you next, because people want to stay and talk. <laughs> Cause we having fun. It's like every all the other artists be having a head and a phone, and and not. Dude, I can't tell people. you. I cannot tell you how many times I, I went up to that. a table with like a preconception of how this person's going to be act. You know what I mean? And they're charging whatever they're charging for their art or their autograph or whatever the hell there is yes. they're pushing. And like I'm giving them money, and the interaction is nothing. Nothing. It's nothing. And somebody you, told me I ain't saying this artist's name, but somebody they super famous. I'm not. Yeah. I'm just a lowly bum. <laughs> uh, like, but they was like, yo, blah, blah, blah over there, man. I just spent like, uh, like almost a thousand dollars on a commission yeah. and he kicked me to the side, man. Of course they buy it from me, but it's like, man, talking <laughs> to you, man. I always come back for you, Barry, because you, you, you be chopping it up. I, mean, yeah. I, rem I remember a lot of the people and um, I just have a lot of fun. I, I enjoy, I, I fought to be in this job. I mean, before I was doing this, I was flipping burgers and pumping gas in 2015. Yeah. And, and then I said, you know what? Uh, I told my manager, Ash Mashburger, I go, hey, I'm going to the con this year. And uh, if I get signed, can this be my two weeks? If I don't get signed, she goes, <laughs> yes, Barry, you can come back. And then I've never been back since 2015. I've been working she's for myself. Still, she's still waiting right she's now. She's still, still waiting. And guess what? Keep her, keep her waiting. She's going to be keep waiting, she's dude. Gonna, I ain't gonna, never yeah. going back, dude. Because like, I was like, you making $250 a week flipping burgers, yeah. or you can yeah. make $250 yeah. a page. Which one you want to do? Yeah. What are you going to do? Dude, that that's incredible. What one more thing? I wanted to go over. Uh, uh, you play a lot of games. You play a lot yeah, of video games, and I I want to know um, basically like your your experience with them. You you play all kinds of different. You seem to be more into like role playing, like fantasy, medieval. Yeah, kind of I am. But I like, love hack and flashes and RPGs. I do. Yeah, but like what when when you, when you're how much are you drawing? How much influence are you drawing from those kinds of things when you're thinking about comics? So I, I have to imagine that you're pulling some inspiration from those I kinds am. of things. Or decompressing and passively absorbing that, right? Uh, passively aggress um, pa passively absorbing the, the camera angle. I constantly, oh, that, constantly damn, I never thought about look that. at those, it's those camera angles, man. Dang, uh, yeah. Uh, I like oh Resident Evil or something like that, or oh like, yeah, that's huge. The for camera, camera. Like, if I ever have a trouble, because we all run into trouble. Sure. Um, I, I'm I'm having trouble with an angle that I'm not used to. I'll Ooh. just pop on the game, play it a little bit, forget everything you know what i mean like or you know yeah. I mean, 
pick up my guitar or something like that, play around with there that a little bit. But um, when I'm looking at these angles, I'm, I'm like, oh, that's it. That's brilliant. That's it. It's mm. free. It's like a free <laughs> reference. Nobody ever uses it. Yeah. And I'm having fun because wow. I mean, Elden Ring is Elden Ring. Come on. Yeah, yeah. I saw you play. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I saw you playing that. I think you were messing around with some like uh, Hogwarts Legacy, and I thought I think like yeah, Dark Souls. I, mean, I can't even believe it was all controversy behind that game, but especially when they had the trans person, the trans wizard in there. I was like, why is y'all doing that? They they care about everybody. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, you know, yeah. That, that property cares about everybody. That's yeah. their loss, not having that fun. Because I was playing it, man. I called myself Barry Potter, dude. So I ain't playing. <laughs> Didn't you model like your character kind of after yes. yourself? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was yeah. just like me. Was, yeah, yeah, yeah. That Harry really Potter scary. in a building. But I mean, it, when uh, when that stuff, when JK was forming, funny story, I was 18 years old and I was working at Barnes and Noble. Uh, oh, and I used man. to always want to have my book up in there, which is now sold in there now. Oh, and okay. So um, my book is sold everywhere now, all across the world. Plug it. What is it? Go. And so. I'm sitting there, and I remember one day, I'm 18. This is Pokemon first came out. It was real. The booster packs was crazy. Yeah, yeah, So yeah. I'm sitting in there at the cash register, and then this, I seen all these kids coming back in with their parents all the time. I was like, what's this book called Harry Potter? I was like, what is this crap? And I was like, I'm, I'm into, like, Star Wars. Yeah. Bridge of the Sith. That campaign was out at that time. Right, right. right. And so I'm setting up a kiosk. It was like, some lady coming. Her name's J.K., rallying something oh, like no that. Kidding. So I'm setting up her chaos and I was like, what the fuck is a JK rally? Man? I'm trying to go out and like chill out and hang out with some ladies tonight. You know what I mean? So I'm hanging out. Um, so I go out, set up the kiosk. So, cause I had to come in on the Saturday at Quaker Bridge Mall. Yep. Who knew that that was JK, the JK rally of that property. Wow. And, 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 and eight, I was 18 years old. I, if I would have knew who she was going to be, I would have stayed there, man. Yeah. <laughs> but you don't never ever know what's going to pop off. That's true. You know? And I feel the same way about Billy the Kid. Like I don't know. Mm -hmm. This is big. I mean, one time me and Justin, oh, I could tell this story. It's not going to embarrass us. But me and him was like trying to see what the direction the book was going to go, where we're going to sell it, how we're going to keep it going. Yeah. He's like, what do you see, Barry? What do you see? Because we brothers, we get heated. Right. And so I love him so much. But he's like, what do you see, Barry? What do you see? This Friday? I'm like, oh, look, I see the books. I see the, I see the movie. I see the cartoon, the shirts. Yep. And, uh, and that's where we're going. That's where we're heading with this property. You know? That's and, awesome. Uh, I'm so happy Justin believed in me to – to trust me enough with his vision and now we both share the same vision and it's the best project i ever worked on so far you know um, yeah including all the stuff that i got coming out now i'm just happy every morning i wake up and i get to put my, my pencil to the paper and represent the four colors to the fullest man that's a great way to end it right there, dude. Just, I mean, B Billy's amazing. So, so I, I wish you guys all the best luck in the world for that. I cannot wait to get my hands on more of that stuff. Thank um, you. Buy yeah. blue juice. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. And then order of day and that. I can't wait for that as well. I mean, you said maybe that's going to be hitting some Kickstarter stuff in the coming months. Um, it's so going to be hitting attention. Kickstarter. Give me, a, give me a good month or two because oh, yeah. I got to have time, Charlie man. color it. Once Charlie Hogg, who's my colorist. Um, shout yeah. out to Charlie Hogg. I love you to death, brother. My man, my brother from another mother in the UK. Um, <laughs> yep, yep. I've been working with him for like at least a decade now. Um, you can, if you want to see a sample of our work together, go buy Monsters and Magi. It's a trade on Blue Juice Comics. It's Monsters mm -hmm. and Magi and Bonnie. Monsters and Magi. You can see 12 pages of how we work and stuff in the cover and all that. Oh, yeah. But, um, yeah, you're going to love it, man. It's going to be crispy clean. I promise it's going to be on time. And I'm not going to fucking bullshit you when we kickstart it. I, I guarantee you the whole trade's coming out. <laughs> you heard it right there then. All right. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. That That is so cool. But hey, guys, man, uh, if people wanted to reach out to you, check out some commission stuff, find you on socials, man. Where can they find you? Um, stay broke on Instagram. Stay understands bro, stay under underscore broke on Instagram. You can get me Barry McLean Jr. on TikTok. Um, Barry McLean Jr. on um, Facebook. Um, you see my ugly mug there, or um, you can uh, reach me at bluejuicecomics.com. I'm always up for ability kit commissions through the company because I'm a company man. Hell yeah! And um, uh, other than that, man, if you see me on the road, man, just holler at me, man. I, I'm I'm everywhere. Reach out to Nick if you want to get at me. He know how to oh, get yeah. at me, too, I can, guys. Yeah, I can, yeah, I got in your DMs, so I'm good there. Yeah. Um, you got any cons coming up? Any appearances? Anything like that? 
I know um, you, you, I love your table too. So like, yeah, thank it, you, that's, that's so cool. I, I wish I you would come down to the, the, I'm in middle Tennessee. I wish you would make your way around here, but I know it's like, super I will. Difficult if, to you, go if you got a, a show or something like that, just give me like uh, four months in advance. I'm there. Yeah. I'm there. Yeah. Um, oh. Because uh, we got to work out flights and all that stuff. Like oh, that. Yeah. I mean, I oh, can't yeah. believe I'm talking like this. I mean, it wasn't like this for me, but blue, you know, like blue juice, be like find me places and stuff like that. And Take it you in. Know, I got a criteria, but I've been holding back from doing a lot of the shows this year. Yeah. Um, and, and I kind of put a little hiatus on a four color demon tour because I got to make the books. But you got to go um, to work. Yes. Yeah. But after yeah. that, you know, I'm going to be on the road, but my next show is going to be in May, May 8th. And that will be at uh, Rebels Fair here in Colorado. And then I'm going to be doing Kevin Smith's, uh, um, Kevin Smith's in Chicago. His, um, the, I can't, I can't believe I'm forgetting the name. The Chronicon. That's what it is. Oh, the okay. In Chicago. I'll be doing that. So I'll be that, there. That is so cool, dude. Man, I love talking to you, dude. Thank you so much for coming you, on. Man. And uh, guys, yeah, check out Barry's stuff, dude. It, it, it's it, it, and remember it's guys always stay kind to each other always Absolutely. work hard and burn lads to get dead for color demons <laughs> and as we say station be excellent to each other <laughs> thanks a lot man appreciate your time